Michael Van Zandt, OKC, going for three grand. Harry Chapin. How many years is a U.S. Senate term? Two. In what 1991 horror movie did Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins star? Silence of the Lambs. What is the capital of Iran? Tehran. Who became U.S. president after John F. Kennedy was assassinated? LBJ. In what famous novel will you find the character Atticus Finch? Mockingbird the Killer. Uh, kill Mockingbird. How many nickels are in five bucks? Five bucks, a hundred. One hundred. What is the name of the talking dog on the TV show Family Guy? Brian. Uh, it's not uh. uh Robin Leach hosted what 1980? Hello, Richard Lifestyle, the Richard Famous. And if you want to see the answers, head on over to my YouTube channel at KOMA, Mission Im Minute Impossible. I always say Mission Impossible. Let's hear these answers. Toyota Camry, you're in your Toyota Camry, you're listening to you're, John Hart, you're, you're listening to Thousand Dollar Please, Impossible, screaming at the radio, please, and cruising through it. If you cannot yeah. do any better than that, why are you calling? It's not, you, it's not number nine gets three grand. But you get a free car wash for 90 days, man. Those are good. Those are good. Icon Cinema. VIP seating at Icon Cinema. They're a lot better than those five DVDs they gave me that one time that were all terrible. Thanks for playing, Michael. And tickets to the Home Garden show that I gave away. Were you cruising along like he normally does when he's not on the radio trying to play? Oh, man. Listen closely. Let's go over him. What singer songwriter had the hit song Cats in the Cradle, the tearjerker, the great Harry Chapin? Michael, he passed on that one. How many years is a U.S. Senate term? Michael said two. And no, two years is a U.S. House of Representatives term. Yeah, a Senate term is six. Six. Who knew? In what 1991 horror movie did Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins star? Ooh, Halloween's coming. It's Silence of the Lambs. Michael it gets passed the on that again. one. What's the capital of Iran? Another pass. And Michael, it's Tehran. Tehran, Iran. Or Tehran, Iran. Slowing it down uh, here. Slowing it down. U.S. president. After John F. Kennedy was assassinated, it was Lyndon Johnson, LBJ. He took over, was sworn in on the plane as he was flying back to Washington, D.C. Uh, in what famous novel will you find the character Atticus Finch? That was in To Kill a Mockingbird. You got that one, Michael. How many nickels are in five bucks? Quick math. Good for you. A hundred. Twenty times five. What's the name of the talking dog on the TV show Family Guy? Michael, I, I, I had a hunch you knew that. It's Brian. Brian, the talking dog. And Robin Leach hosted what 1990s early reality TV show? Michael didn't Did we get the old hit of him? It's Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I'm Robin Leach. Yeah, that was an early thing. We didn't get to number 10. Yeah, we didn't give away three grand. I sure wanted to today, but I'll tell you what, we have so much money to give away. All you have to do is play. Tomorrow morning at 7.10, no. we'll give it another shot. What do you say? No. thousand bucks up for grabs every no. weekday morning, and on Thursdays, the money triples. We call it $1,000 Minute Impossible. No. Unconventional, but not impossible. Unconventional, but not impossible. Music to wake up to. I need to laugh first thing in the morning. You can all use a little good news. John Hart in the morning. I'm good, but not impossible. Yes, I was blinded by the light as I am driving down. And before I become demonetized over on YouTube, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to shut this down. Oh man, what a sad day. The three thousand dollar Thursday. I don't even sniff a ringy ringy. And we have one terrible player after another. Please, I beg of you. If you don't know any more than Van Zant, don't don't call in. Don't 
don't don't get on the radio thinking I'm caller nine. I'm going to win that money. I I played 15 times and I haven't won it. And I've gotten nine out of ten and eight out of ten so many times, and and blew a couple three easy ones that I should have won. You know, but I'm my own worst enemy again. I called and kept getting on, and everybody's like, "Well, nobody's calling because this." Fools getting on all the time. I can call win that money. I can call win that money. I've actually heard people get none of them right. Zero. I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm up against a rigged deck. You know what I mean? You know, uh, like a uh, a rolling stone gathers no moss. <laughs> a rolling stone gathers. Yeah, that means uh, nothing can stick to you if you keep on moving. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah. Where do you suppose she lives? Um, let's talk about Deion Sanders this morning and Shadur and his other son and blah, 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 blah. Um, Deion Sanders has won one game. Now, they were a dog and you know, he had some talent at quarterback, and he's got some talent at wide receiver, but he gave up 42 points, so he doesn't have much talent on defense. I don't know how good TCU is. You know, TCU turned the ball over a couple, three times. You know, I'm not going to say that Prime Tom had to be lucky to win, but it didn't hurt. Uh, but let me tell you something that Prime Time did not do. Yeah, I don't have to really think about it that long. He is not the one who said, you know what I'm gonna say here? Let's slice the bread before we sell it. That was a little dude over at Wonder. No wonder they started dominating the market for bread. Up until that time, you had to cut it yourself. And really up until that time, people mostly just baked it themselves. Very interesting. Uh, documentary about uh, bread and uh, what went on with it in World War II and how it became proprietary. Um, uh, Pepperidge Farms had a kind of a secret ingredient to doing theirs, a secret way of doing it. And uh, they wouldn't, you know, and everybody else was having to send how they did it to the people at Wonder so they could try to make all the bread. Pepperidge Farms refused to do that. And they thought, well, they'll go out of business and they'll have to do, they can only sell this much and they can only get this many ingredients. And they said, that's fine with us. We're not gonna, we're not giving up our secret ingredients and our, our proprietary system to wonder so that they can exploit it at a later date. So they didn't. Okay, uh, on this day, uh, Tupac Shakur was killed on this day. And uh, I look at my history every morning, and that's about all I can remember from this morning. Uh, also, on this day in 1996, John Blake coached his first game at OU, and everybody thought, oh, it's going to be like prime time. It's going to be like a prime time. Well, you didn't have any NIL back then. You couldn't transfer. And uh, just a few years earlier, uh, well, we went through idiot Howard Schnellenberger who didn't recruit anybody. Then before that, we had Gary Gibbs. Before that, we had massive probation that left the But we didn't have a losing season. We didn't lose. And, and uh, we, uh, his first game against TCU came to town. <clears throat> we, were, we were pretty big. We were pretty big favorites in the game. And we got beat 20 to 7. And it wasn't that close. It was a it was a sad day. Uh, the next week, I think we go out to Cal, and we get driven like like a like a Mack truck. Then we come back home and play Kansas, and they hung half a hundred on us. They beat us, but and during that game, we did manage to have our first lead of the season. We took the lead like. I don't know, 17, 13, something like that. 
and uh, I'm like in the stands and I'm going, all right, we got our first lead. And, and it's really already beginning to turn into a fiasco in the, in the stadium. And the attendance is already starting to de-windle. And so we kick off and like many John Blake teams, why do I need to do special teams? That's not an important part of the game. They run it back for a touchdown, take the lead, they never relinquish it. So we're 0 and 3. And Texas looms upon the horizon. So we're going down to Texas and we have fallen so far. Funny how falling feels like flying for a little while. But it really didn't feel like we were ever going to fly again because we were bad. Atlanta GA. Uh, that's so stupid. So we go to Texas and we're 22 point underdogs. And I'm uh, taking my future wife for the to, to her first OU Texas game. Mind you, I already took her to Owen Field a couple times and embarrassed me. Thank you, John Blake. So we go to Texas and we're 22 point underdogs. And my brother and I and his girlfriend and my then girlfriend are sitting down on row zero right behind the OU bench. And, and, we're, and we're hanging in there. We have a blocked punt, but we're hanging in there. And we're hanging in there. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm going, man, we have just got to have, we have got to have a cheap one. If we can get a cheap one, I think we'll have a chance, a cheap one. So Texas punts and son of Jarrell, Jarrell Jackson fields it and cuts to his right and goes right up the sidelines for a touchdown. That's, my, that's the cheap one that we needed to stay with them. Also, um, since we're sitting right behind the OU bench, I'm like, you know, I'm like 25 feet from Dick Winder, the OC. And Texas is normally Texas. They can't tackle. They don't want to tackle. They think tackling's for someone else. And James Allen is starting to tear him up. And and back in 96, that's a long time ago, I could, I could really belt it out. And I am just screaming at Dick Winder to just give the ball to James Allen and get out of his way. And uh, I don't know if Dick Winder heard me. He, if he didn't, he must be deaf because he started, they just started feeding James Allen and he started killing them, killing them, hey bear. So we get down there and it's like our last drive and I'm still just wearing Dick Winder out with give the ball to James Allen, just give the ball to James Allen. And we're clear on the road today. So James Allen comes around the run the left side and he cuts back to the middle and he runs about 55 yards down to the four yard line with less than a minute to play. Scores tight. And uh, man, I was excited and I was hooping and I was going crazy. Well, the guy next to me is a big Texas fan and uh, cause a bunch of OU fans sold all their seats. And uh, he starts laughing at me. Whole penalty called it back and so, they call it back and and um, it's futile and we run out the clock and go to overtime and uh, we win the toss. It's our first. It's our first overtime game. Not waving at you, just simply putting a hand up to block that sun because it hasn't gone that. So it's our first overtime game. Texas gets the ball first. Um, they piddle paddle around and uh, well, who is their coach? I mean, who? Well, what's Mac Brown? Might have been. It was Makovic. They piddle around and end up kicking a field goal, uh, and so they take a three-point lead. And now we've got the ball. And I remember looking at my brother, and both of us at the same time looked at each other and said, "Touchdown wins it. Touchdown wins it." And we were correct. Touchdown would win it. We run a couple, three plays, and there's some debate about, oh, what down is it? What down is it? And all the time, what am I saying to Dick Winder? Just give the ball to James Allen. And they run a pitch sweep. James Allen cuts it back inside, runs about two yards, and dives into the end zone. And it is officially over. And the OU fans are absolutely going crazy. It's a wild time. And my Texas buddy, my buddy, I'm going to call him my buddy, big asshole. He, uh, he shoves me out of the way to leave, pushes me. And he's going up the aisle. And I go, hey, bud. 
And he looks back at me and I said, I just pointed at him. I said, good game, dude. <laughs> and we ended up beating him and it was sad. Uh, but not to fear, we only won two more games that year. Uh, he goes three and eight. But one of the games we did win was against OSU. And a, uh, a lot of people think that um, OSU beat John Blake all three years. He didn't. They beat us. We beat him once the first game. We were in it the third game and the la second game. They just they just kind of whacked us. So that's where that guy from OSU goes. Uh, and then J J uh, Bob Suits came to town. He goes, yeah, we like going down to OU and playing. It's like a little Lewis Field down there. Yeah, like a little Lewis Field. Uh, they come to Norman and we just we just whack them. We just beat them to death that year. Well, I'm at work and it's Thursday and I didn't get to play and I didn't win the money. It's one sad day for man, one giant leap for mankind. But, um, yeah. The LBJ question this morning was just unforgivable. And of course they threw it to kill a mockingbird in there as well. Unforgivable. Uh, I've been studying and I've been studying that Brian question for a long time. I was ready. I would have loved to have played today and got to question 10 so I could have blown it or won 3,000 bucks. So, uh, SMU looms high on the horizon. We'll talk about them tomorrow. Sorry, Toby, I didn't get to bring you in today. I got too busy. So, from everybody at the Armada room, don't go changing. <laughs>